Hello, beautiful stars. Welcome to today's reading. All right, so we have a special reading for you today. We are going to connect with your higher self and we'll see what messages wants to come through from your higher self. So we have three piles for you today to choose from. Um, <clears throat> this is pile number one with this disc and design. Okay, this is pile two with this, this disc and design. All right, and this is pile three with this disc and design. Alright, lovely stars, so take a moment to tune into your intuition and see which pile calls out to you. Uh, take a nice deep breath when you open your eyes. Um, <clears throat> go to the description and the timestamps down below, and I will see you in your reading. Hello, Pile 1. Welcome to your reading. All right, so before we get started, um, I hear you are special, <laughs> and I don't think that's taken lightly, um, <clears throat> but yes. <laughs> so we are tuning into the message from your higher self, and this is the um, uh, disc that you have chosen. Uh, we'll see what messages ties in, but... Um, for your tarot, they want me to shuffle on camera. When I was going to shuffle, they were like, no, wait. Okay, so for pile one, please, Spirit. What message does the higher self want to let them know? Something's coming. Someone is coming. Um... I hear admiration. So it's a combination of work that you've done, Pile One. Um, and there's some sense of admiration, whether it's coming from somebody new um, or just uh, people that you have around you. Uh, I hear like workers, boss like, some sort of appreciation, admiration going on. Okay, so that's a little bit of energy that your higher self wants to tell you. Let's see what else um, your higher self wants to convey. Okay, so we have alignment. Okay. So I feel like you've done a good amount of work, pile one. Your higher self <laughs> feels really... Well, of course, first of all, it's very loving towards you, uh, but feels also very appreciative for the work that you have put in, in terms of your growth, your spiritual development, your development in general. Um, more so kind of like the, um, I'm hearing kind of that, that characteristic trait of the essence of who you are, putting effort and work into that to become a strong character uh, is what we're getting, yes. So let's see. We have Lady Gaia with your challenges are lessons. You are loved and welcome on earth. <coughs> so a combination of Gaia energy coming through here as well. Um, two different messages from this um, this one card. Uh, one is, of course, the overall pervasive loving energy of Gaia coming through. The other is about your lessons here on Earth in combination with um, this, uh, this card here, alignment. The work you put in, more so being a student of Earth, um, a student of this life, going through the processes and the nuances and the lessons that you have learned here on Earth. Uh, what you have discovered, how you have grown, uh, what you, the diligence you put in, and what you have grown to become this version of yourself now. That's why there's so much admiration and um, applaud, uh, applause, applaud, applauding, praise 
that's coming to you. It's your higher self really appreciate the works, uh, the work that you have put in uh, into your character and your personal development and growth with all the lessons you've gone through. Um, I have a feeling I want to save this for the end. Okay, so we're going to wait on that. Let's dive straight into your um, tarot next. And they wanted me to, like I mentioned earlier, shuffle these on camera. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to shuffle them and then we're going to select some cards. Otherwise, <laughs> it might take a really long time. This is why I usually keep the shuffling process out from the recording, but um, they insisted this time. So here we go. All right. Um, so for pile one, please, spirit. For the higher cells of pile one. One more here. Uh, okay. Can we get the message that you wish to convey for your 3D selves here, higher selves of pile one, please. Okay, um, gonna grab this one and let's see here. We're gonna grab, actually this one, yes, okay. So bear with me here for a little bit, lovely stars. I do three shuffles on this one. Any other messages coming through that you like to convey for Pile One, please, Spirit? Um, they're telling me <clears throat> that you're encouraged to continue, be determined on your path. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing some of you are a little bit tired. <laughs> both perhaps in terms of physically but also more so weary or uh, perhaps the lessons you've gone through kind of have i mean you've grown and you progressed a lot um so keep going forward with, with it <laughs> is the encouragement it, it sounds like um, what I'm hearing, I'm just going to say it as is, is like, I know you're tired. It's literally what they're saying, uh, what your higher self is conveying here too, along with your guides. It's like, I know you're tired. <sighs> and we have <laughs> a 9 or 9 on the clock here. I know you're tired, but keep going. You're almost there. Um, and for the majority of you, it's like, it's not that you're depleted, you're feeling good, but it's more so you're tired of perhaps going through the lessons, yes, over and over, or um, that's not the best way to commit it. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, having to see the lessons again or see the lessons in both of yourself and in others. Um, that is what's tiresome, yes. Um, or seeing people go through the same lessons of process that you have learned. It's um, like when you see a, let's say for example, when you were a child and you had to learn um, that, you know, putting your fire, I mean, your hand in fire is not a great experience. And so you learn that lesson and you've grown from it. And then, but you see other people repeating the lesson over and over. And that's what it means by to be tired of it all. Um, to see people going through the same suffering over and over. Okay. So let's see what our message here next is. We have <clears throat> the full. It's a new journey that's coming through. It's stepping into something else. Um, a broader expansion of yourself, almost like into a new dimension. Um, so we have four cups. You're going to be the healer for all. 
well, I mean, <coughs> for all in the sense that you are going to be healing wherever you go, wherever you are um, pervasive, wherever your presence is pervasive, wherever your energy is pervasive. It's like who, those who come in contact and associate with you, um, you will provide that kind of healing energy that goes forward with it. Okay, we have the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, be playful. Re um, keep your youthful spirit up. Um, keep a playful energy up. It's what's part of going to help you through helping people with their suffering and their lessons. Okay, we have the hermit. Yeah, I have a feeling this ties to this message here. It's what I'm getting, the pool call tour. So we're going to put this here a little bit. But I'm hearing it's time to get out of your shell, get out of your cave, get out of your hermit's mode. Um, yes, perhaps you've gone through kind of like a, just a, a quiet, peaceful or reflective time, right? Even for some of you as retreats and um, or retreating away from the world a little bit to go into your inner reflection, which is good. It's, um, <clears throat> there's a, certainly a great period of growth for that. But since you accomplished the lessons and you can now incorporate the lessons uh, to be the strong character who you become because you learn all those lessons, it's time to take that wisdom from those lessons and bring yourself I'm hearing shine out to the world. Um, it's what I'm getting. It's like I see this lamp rising ever so higher and higher. And it's like in perspective wise and in um, uh, what do we call that? The vantage point as the light goes higher and higher, right? It shines on, on a greater uh, area. So I see here you're carrying this light so close to you. But I see the lamp just kind of almost being like whisked out of your hand and keep on rising higher and higher until it shows you um, to everybody else. Okay. And then we have the Seven of Pentacles. Yes, so it's that same energy of keeping at it, um, both in terms of self-development because we are forever growing in our 3D selves, um, even on a soul level where we incarnate to to learn lessons, experience lessons, but expand our soul uh, on a greater level and then to bring that knowledge to source. And so um, source itself um, can expand and grow, and grow. So that is on a bigger scale of things, definitely, uh, in the universal uh, grand scale of thing. But on a more tangible 3D level, I see uh, some of you um, planting, well, keeping at your, your, yes, A, growth and development, but part of it is also maybe projects or things that you have kind of um, kick-started or gotten going to keep going forward with it. My eye gets drawn to focus to these trees in the background. It's it's made a lot of progress already, um, but that's part of the keep going as well. Um, <coughs> is to yeah to keep at it until you until I see you have like a full orchard. I also get the picture of you kind of sitting there comfortably, um, almost kind of like a nine of pentacles energy, where you're enjoying the lavishness of your much um, well deserved. Uh, accomplish work. So yeah, I see these four trees in the background growing to a full orchard and you sitting enjoying your lemonade, the fruits of your labor, literally the fruits as well of wherever your orchard has grown. Um, okay, we have the Knight of Wands. So this is the combination of somebody coming in. I keep getting a strong energy of somebody coming in. This is definitely the energy of somebody else coming in. Um, who is this person? Or what is their energy like? Uh, of course, they are coming in with fiery, a lot of speed energy. 
Uh, okay, yeah, a lot of energy coming through. They are... Why do I hear the word well-established? Okay, well, we'll just convey it as is. I hear they are well-established, uh, whatever that means, um, perhaps to this person or to you. Um, but yes, they're, they're going to lend you a helping hand in some way or another. Uh, talk about helping hand here. This is another, uh, I see. <laughs> so this is coming out of the blue. Uh, yes, for some of you, it's somebody coming in to help or some sort of resource or information coming in to help that you currently do not see. Um, perhaps it's along with this path here, this development, but it's part of veering out a little bit. I think the main thing to keep um, right now is this youthful spirit, sense of uh, playfulness and innocence, right? In your approach to your daily life, in approach to your, um, your projects, your endeavors, uh, whatever you have going on, and just to kind of be... Um, <coughs> uh, it's an energy of being willing and being ready, um, being ready to go. Yeah. So enjoying where you are, uh, staying where you are right now, especially being the hermit mode that you are, but being ready and open to whatever newness comes in, get ready to step into the adventure, uh, into the universe that uh, of whatever comes next for you. Um, we have also here the, <laughs> now they're pointing that out, the dreamer or child. Um, it's This is a combination of knowing you are blessed and protected and guided. This is the arc, <coughs> arc feel angelic shield here, but also there's universal abundance um, and things coming through for you and also with self-alignment here. That's why I love about these this. They're multi-dimensional in terms of the message that you convey and the energy itself. Um, yeah, so a lot of alignment here, but uh, being eager and willing when the opportunity or when somebody comes knocking at your door. Uh, currently, it's, yeah, it's out of your vision. Um, so two messages coming here with the healing earlier, but also, yes, not seeing the the offers that's coming your way. Um, still want to save this for last. Let's look at your Lenormand real quick. Let's shift these a little bit here. Okay. So with this Lenormand, it's a little bit different. It's called Lenormand Sol Solitaire. And there's different images here each with a corresponding card. So here we have the woman, or the feminine energy, fish, um, heart, and snake. And I'll explain all those in a little bit. So, but what we have here is we'll match up the images and see what the message comes from about, that is. Okay, so we have the man here, a very clear message that your higher self wants to convey. Um, okay, so let's scoop this up. I'm laughing because it's a very direct message here uh, for some of you that are expecting a, a certain something. <laughs> um, so we have the mountain. Uh, I see. Okay, and then we have the snake. Oh, double snake, okay. And then we have the anchor with the heart. Okay. Let me take a moment with this double snake energy real quick here. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. Well, that didn't take too long. It's the shedding of, yes. Um, okay. So let's see, where do you want to start? Let's start with, um, let's start with here. 
So for those of you who are perhaps waiting or expecting um, in terms of more than just a regular relationship, perhaps like a romantic relationship, there is the possibility of union here in terms of masculine and feminine energy, uh, divine masculine and feminine energy. So gender is irrelevant. Um, but yes, uh, somebody embodies whether you embody a lot of feminine, divine feminine energy or uh, a lot of masculine energy, your counterpart is coming in here, is the energy we're getting. Um, yes, so for some of you, that means union with a soul partner or soulmate. Um, others, I see this kind of well niche collaborative energy. That's the melting of it. So if you're not expecting, a romantic relationship. I see a very cohesive energy coming in, working along with you, whether it's on your career, whether it's on your personal development, or whether it's, um, yeah, whatever else you have going on. I see, I feel a very cohesive energy, a very complementary energy. Um, that's what's coming in clearly here. Okay, and where you are at, perhaps because of um, being in this hermit mode and not seeing, wow, that's amazing, this falling over, this not seeing this blessing or, or this person or this opportunity or this energy, this new fresh energy coming in, because you're in a state of kind of cloudiness right now. I know this is not the cloud, but it's kind of like, an area or period uncertainty that creates this kind of cloudy um, uncertain atmosphere it's like well i'm just kind of chilling in my life in my shell in my hermit mode because i'm not sure what's next to come yet um, and that in a way seems like it's an obstacle to perhaps the abundance that's flowing that's going to be flowing into your life um, yeah, it seems like where you are at right now, perhaps in this kind of standstill, yet period or phase, that standstill itself seems like an obstacle, but there is abundance on its way, or more so, yeah, a combination here. For some of you, it's abundance. For others of you, it's a relief coming in. Um, and that obstacle that is seemingly so... Um, monumental will just kind of I see the clouds receding and fading away and the sun arising behind the mountain here <coughs> even the snow melting so what seemingly I'm getting a message that it what, what seemingly is like a mirage of an obstacle will naturally dissipate away when clarity comes through so this obstacle or this so-called um, illusion or mirage of an obstacle will be easily be cleared up once the air has lifted or once the clarity has come through. Yeah, okay. And the snake here is a shedding of old skins. What is in this regard to... What would... Okay, what do you want to say for your 3D self here, higher self. Okay, wow, they wanna go far, okay. <laughs> so part of it is shedding in this lifetime, perhaps, what are they shedding? Is it just negative emotions? Um, no, it's the emotions that linger from the experiences that we wanna shed away, yes. The, especially the trying, the challenging, the hard experiences that you've gone through, the heartaches, the hurt, the pain, the betrayal, the, yeah. It's those kind of emotions. It's like the experience has come and gone, especially with those party, those people, those situation, those experiences. But the emotions linger on. And that's the skin that they want you to shed. It's the skin of those emotions, the negative emotions that keep on clinging on to revert back to quote unquote to your pure state, into your, <laughs> into your higher self, into alignment 
and connection with your higher self again. And there's no doubt that most of you have done the work um, that you've accomplished this. Your wings have spread. But part of this earthly experience is the human emotions, right? Um, so part of that shedding is not necessarily, well, some of you could benefit from cleansing. Uh, I'm getting that <laughs> loud and clear now. Um, but others of you, it's more so, uh, that's why this is coming through. That's, okay. <laughs> the moon, along with this cloud combination, makes it seem nebulous and cloudy and airy. It's like, it's almost like a mist that's hard to to rub off no it's like humidity humidity in an environment of humidity it's hard to ever get dry right or it's hard to ever feel comfortable because yeah the humidity is so dense just like the experiences on this earth can be really dense and the the emotional um residue is like the humidity it keeps on clinging on so what we what your higher self wants to stay and and encourage is to kind of um find a way to um best clear yourself of this density when it comes up because then uh, what they're uh, this is hard uh, <laughs> a bit of a challenging concept to convey. It's like when the emotions pour in and flood in, where you have developed yourself to this point, it's easy just to kind of, okay, maybe it's not easy, but it's, <laughs> it's like when you find those emotions, those residual emotions coming through, focus on you, the playful aspect of life. Remember the happy um youthful aspect of yourself shift that focus sh shift that energy the the negative residual energy into something more productive something more fruitful um, and that is a type of shedding of that energy of that humidity it's like when the humidity comes um yeah thinking or shifting that into a positive way can be like taking up a, a cloth and wiping the humidity off. Uh, that's a really poor analogy, but it's the best I have <laughs> at the moment. So I hope you're getting the message. Okay, let's go to the final card of the Lenormand here. Um, this pertains loop back to this union thing. And this harm, um, we'll speak first to the union and then we'll speak to the harmonious aspect for those of you who are not expecting a union for the union it's going to be a very stable loving connection relationship emotional fulfillment and love on all its level so kudos hurrah hooray to that um <laughs> yes it's going to be a very stable loving connection all right now for those of you who are not on that path for romance um this harmonious state, this collaborative, complementary, you name it, this, this flow of energy, whether it comes in just where you are in life, just being peaceful by yourself, or in your work, or with your family, so on, so forth, etc., etc. It's a harmonious energy that will stick not only with you for a long period of time, it will provide you with a sense of anchoring, literally, and um, peace and calm and serenity. Yes. Okay. Let's get to our final oracles and message here. So we have let it go. <laughs> the situation no longer serves you. Allow me to sever your energetic connections to the past so you can embrace the future. What do we talk about? Shedding a new skin, letting go of that residual emotional energy. Um, anything else from this message, Archangel Michael? And higher selves, a pile of one, please. Nope, that prayer message is pretty straightforward. So yes, um, someone new is coming. <laughs> 
we said that multiple times already and it comes out in multiple forms okay yeah we have yeah d um divine union here <laughs> they don't want me to say anything else divine union someone new is coming an important new relationship is on the horizon open your mind and heart so that happiness can enter your life yes um something about spotlight coming through here but yes divine union i think that's these two messages no one that they saved it for less speak pretty much for themselves it's pretty straightforward um <clears throat> yeah okay so releasing sh um shedding the old burdens especially when the emotions flow in sh learn to shift that emotion which i feel like most of you already are in that stage of learning how to manifest i mean um manipulate or transform that energy into something greater and being able to release it um, the best way to do it is by focusing on that youthful spirit um, young spirit side of your soul of your higher self here yes and lots of wonderful things to look forward to um, both in terms of partnership and in terms of harmonious energy flowing through. Be ready to step into the new horizon is our final message here, is what they're pointing me out to. All right, higher selves of pile one. Anything else that you would like to convey? Okay, knowing that you are very well loved. Um, yes, you are special. That's the very first message before we got to any cards. Pile one is what your higher self really wants to say. You are a very unique and beloved individual absolutely wonderful uh wishing you <laughs> many wonderful things to come that are already on its way to you just be persistent and uh, remain steadfast and wait and allow for the energy to flow your way pile one all right pile one that was your reading um <clears throat> yeah I don't think we have any further messages, so we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'm wishing you a wonderful, magical day whenever and wherever you are. Um, like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, take care of yourself. Shine ever so bright. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and I will see you in the next reading. <laughs> Bye, lovely stars. Hello, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. All right, so... <laughs> Your your card shuffling process was very interesting and very specific. Uh, we'll get to that soon enough, but we'll look at your main oracles first. And then, actually, let's look at the disc that you have chosen. This is the dream child. Um, so for pile two, spirit, higher selves, the pile two, what would you like to convey your 3D selves here, Pile 2? The higher selves of Pile 2. Okay, something about struggle and not being afraid to dream big. Um, okay. So what does Pile 2's higher self want to convey to Pile 2's? Yeah, something is struggling. Uh, something about struggling going through. Okay, well, okay. Um, give me a second. <laughs> it's a bit of a major ear ringing there. Where do we want to correct that? A struggling process? Okay, let's look into the cards and see <laughs> what they're saying about this. Okay, so we have Divine Masculine. Hmm, okay, I think let's see, start to see where the struggle is. At least the energy of it is forcing something into being. Okay, embrace your life purpose. I'm guiding you toward your divine life purpose. Whatever makes your heart joyful is what you're meant to be doing. 
Uh, okay. Look at it from a light perspective is what I'm getting uh, about to. Um, <clears throat> we're not sure what you're uh, hesitating or hesitant or kind of struggling with at the moment, but hopefully we'll find out soon with all these cards here as the messages come through. But there is a co coercion or force of something um, perhaps to make something happen, but um, yeah, there, there's a better way to, to embrace it. Okay, regain your focus. Trivial life matters are distracting you from your goals. Archangel Metatron and I are here to help you stay grounded. Okay, yes, um, center, reconnection, alignment, um, getting back to the self. Getting back and in sync with your higher self is what we're getting. Your higher self really wants to, yes, um, one is connecting with you. Yes, of course, we are your guides. Even we are your own internal self, we are your heart, right? That's where you go to connect with your higher self. Um, there, I mean, the various methods, but the, the easiest way is to go to your inner heart and connect to your higher self. It's, uh, what do you want to convey about their purpose? And so, okay, we want to jump straight into tarot right away um, to clarify this. So let's look at that. And your tarot was split into three different parts. So these two here with these two as clarifiers. One, we're going to shuffle for a clarifier and then um, another portion here. Okay, so let's start with this part here. We have the sun. Something you use to be. What is it that they use to be? Okay, let's keep looking. And then we have the moon. Hmm, okay. Something dead and dried out, put into the cobwebs. Uh, let's look at our clarification here. Let me shift this up here real quick. We have the King of Swords. Ah, uh, okay. And we have the Two of Wands. Okay, part of what I'm getting in this message right here, right now, um, stars, is that there was perhaps when you were younger, um, yes, you had a lot of um, more so creative vision or a, a sense of freedom and airiness to you. Um, and what happened is as time pass right as we go through life as we grow up our childhood dreams tends to get stowed away or quote unquote reality hits or adulthood happens and where we used to shine where our dreams used to shine uh -huh. funny that you chose the um, dream disc here you know, the dream child um which I need to make a correction in pile of one, but yes, um, it's a matter, it's like our dreams as we grow up have to stow away. And I see part of these dreams um, getting kind of like when something gets old and it gets ignored or neglected and it's covered in cobwebs, that's the kind of energy we're getting here there's something that needs to be revitalized because the way that you are forcing or perhaps coercing um certain goal certain agenda certain pathway of being especially in terms of career wise i see here kind of like the life circumstances bringing you into a very structured individual a very um um cerebral individual uh, those are great qualities to um, to cultivate, but also I'm getting the feeling is that you feel constricted in, in one sense, form, way, or shape, or another, 
and you feel like you're always having to push towards new horizons, always looking for the next upgrade, for the next better thing, like having to um, to achieve. Yes, to, to it's like a constant pressure to achieve greater, to be greater, to discover more, to discover greater. It's it's part of. Um, the positive aspect to that is you have a very strong work ethic, um, a very determined individual, very um, structure going individual. But what happens is instead of loving the process and loving the dream for what it is, like the two of ones here talks about seeking new vision that that adventure aspect right especially depicted here but the energy that we're getting here is kind of like the challenging aspect of the two of ones pushing being pressured to advance being pressured to keep on seeking or keep on developing for the sake of developing it's not for the sake or for the love of it which is more the encouragement and the alignment uh, um, that's coming through for you. And uh, Spirit just sent a crow to um, kind of reiterate that message here. But yes, there's a lot of strong masculine energy that I'm getting through here. Like a lot of strong will, a strong drive, very driven, ambitious, um, and feeling that you have to push or coerce yourself in a certain way to whether achieve something, a goal, uh, your workplace, your job, even in your relationship dynamics, in your family, perhaps you are the breadwinner or like the caretaker of the family. So having to stow away your personal, more youthful um, dreams, especially uh, from the childhood years or what you dream big of in terms of when you were younger, doesn't seem realistic as you grew older and having to take care of responsibilities and yeah um, so instead of pushing for advancement out of for the love and passion of it um, yeah and the playfulness and fun of it is pushing it out of obligation and duty and responsibility perhaps all of which are very good skills to have like I said it's it's good ethical uh, it's good work ethic but there is encouragement to um, have a bit more relaxed nature and airiness to it to kind of infuse again what you love doing um, and doing it for the love it uh, doing it for the love of it rather than doing it for the obligation of it okay i think you're getting the, the message um, let's look at this. Actually, we want to save this for last. Okay. Um, well, not for last, but let's go to these first and then we'll go to that. <laughs> okay. So then we have life force energy. This is, uh, one of the extra cards in this deck. Everything is synchronistic is what I'm getting. Everything ties together. You don't have to strive so hard. Um, okay, the five of wands. Yeah. Talk about that, that breadwinner being the alpha of the pack, being the provider. It's the main energy we were getting through there, right? And we're going to look at this clarification after we review this and clarify this card. But... Um, in regards to regaining their focus, um, yeah, no, it's, it's more so regaining the love of what you used to love doing. Um, yeah, doing what you think you're meant to be doing out of love rather than out of duty. Um, because now, yeah, it feels more obligatory. But it's all in conjunction with what you do, pal. Too, it's you are more or less kind of on your pathway to your life purpose. But 
you're doing it in such a way that feels a bit restricted rather than a bit than rather than more free flowing it's the energy dynamic we're getting here you're still on the path you're still doing it but the way to do it is more encouraged especially if your higher self saying there's an easier way to do it or the, uh, perhaps there's a more relaxed way to do it or a smarter way to do it or yeah uh, it doesn't have to feel so constrained you can still do your life purpose and follow your life passion and what you want to do but to do it out from a place of love rather than yeah feeling so constricted let's see what's this okay <clears throat> so we have the tower yeah this is the divine intervention coming through from your higher self and from your guides um saying let's get the picture so you can see it uh okay so what i'm hearing here is um i want to let go but i can't let go what well, two different sentences i want to let go period and then i can't let go period um why is this the case spirit why is it so hard for Pao to to relinquish and let go? We need a clarifier, okay? Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's look. Let's find a clarifier. <laughs> All right, higher selves of Pao two, please. Can we get a clarifier for the difficulty or the struggle that are they are facing with relinquishing this? One more shuffle here, lovely stars. Just a second. Okay, can we get a clarifier on what this struggle is? Okay. The Page of Wands. I feel like we need to draw two more cards, but let's um, see what the message here first is. The Page of Wands. Okay. Um. <coughs> what is in regards to this difficulty of letting go? A combination of... Um, okay, let me draw two more cards. But I'm getting the combination of something magical and a block of wood. I mean, besides Pinocchio. Uh, with the grasshopper here, Jiminy Cricket, but yeah, so much there's an element of magic and obligation, and then being stuck in a certain way. Um, I'm being reminded of Pinocchio. Yes, okay. Let me get two more cards here real quick. <laughs> They're stretching me on this one. <laughs> because the story is... <laughs> what I'm being recalled to is when Pinocchio was... He didn't heed the advice of... Uh, I forgot who it was, who his friends were. Um, I don't know, the new version just came out recently to the new... Pinocchio movie, but he didn't heed his the, the advice of his friends or, or something like that, right? Or, um, okay, hello. Um, we are gonna take all three. Sure, there's one that they don't want me to take. Which one? Okay, we don't want to be biased, so we're taking the first two. We'll hang on to the third one just in case. But going back to the story, um, yes, I think it was Pinocchio's, Pinocchio's friends telling him, like, you shouldn't go with, I think it was like the foxes or something, because they seemed deceptive or tricky, but Pinocchio, like, didn't listen, and he went anyways, and then uh, he was captured, and so on and so forth. Um, so I don't know why, but that's being pointed out to me here with Jiminy Cricket. Um, yeah, it's that kind of... What, what what is being pointed out to me is that kind of persistent energy that I'm not going to listen to what anybody says. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. 
not heeding advice. That's what we're um, the energy we're capturing. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> okay, we have the Ace of Pentacles. Mm, okay, loving it so much. It's almost like an endorphin rush. <laughs> that that's why you can't let it go. Um, and then we have the chariot. It's gonna take some strong will and effort to this. Um, whatever you're holding on to, how to, your higher self is saying that. Yeah, it's like the energy with the Pinocchio story we just got, right? It's not heeding the advice because there's some sort of uh, feeling, some sort of perhaps love or obligation or intertwining, bonding energy, whatever you're hanging on or clinging on to, you're holding it so dear and it's giving you like a rush of endorphins perhaps like you know like when you go into um well when whatever you do uh, whether you're gaming you're eating something that you really love and you know that you like i can't continue like you know that but you keep on doing it because the endorphin rush is so good <laughs> that <coughs> it takes strong intervention and here it's taking divine intervention in this reading to say that it, t it takes control and takes rain. Um, you need to take control, take hold of the rain to really break this cycle, this pattern. Um, yeah, it's a combination of um, when the chariot comes up here, it's yeah, often it has different meanings, but here it's taking rain of the matter, it's taking control again of the matter. And you have that ability because you're like the king of swords here. That's why we're primarily getting. But <clears throat> there's also a lot of swords depicted here. Um, but we, yeah, we want to encourage you to kind of regain your focus. That's really strong here with the chariot falling, especially next to this card. It's regaining your focus, regaining your control, regaining your um the core demeanor um um that's not the right words uh, regaining your um uh, what's the word i'm looking for self-control okay yes something along the lines of that is encouraged um <clears throat> for you to kind of get back on track here but get back on track and, and relation to what we mentioned earlier right it's not to um yeah and part of getting back on track is perhaps not feeling doing things out obligation or feeling doing things out of of um impulse or, or because you need to or because there's a rush or there's a hit yeah well it's let's see here the six of pentacles Yes, the energy that you put in is the energy you put uh, you get out. So wherever you're investing your energy, it's going to be the energy that you get back. Um, so if it's in regards to some sort of project or purpose or thing that you're doing, whatever you're putting your energy into, the more energy you put into it, the more of that same energy you get out of it. And that may not necessarily be a, um, a beneficial thing, right? That's why we're talking about regaining focus and self-control here. It's like the more energy you put into playing games, the more you get drawn into playing games. It's just an example. Or eating a certain things or spending money on um, XYZ. It's like, yeah, the more you put energy into that, the more energy you get drawn into that more so is the energy here that we're getting so yes uh let's look at the clarifiers for this portion here uh it's also draining at your life force energy that's coming through as well um okay so we have the five of wands hmm Interesting multiple messages coming through here. Um, okay, 
And then we have the Page of Swords. More swords here. <laughs> okay, and we have the Three of Swords. Yes. So part of this, I'm getting Black Sheep. Um, feeling that you are, what's that word? Put into a certain role or like people have classified you or, or uh, there's a word for it when people put you in a certain box or category um, besides labeling. Um, this is a specific word that I can't recall right now, but yeah, you feel like perhaps you feel like you have to continue on this path or um, this role or this thing you're doing um, because people have kind of put you as that label, right? It's like, oh, you're going to be a good accountant. Um, why don't you do that job? And then you end up doing that job and you feel obligated to stay in there because your whole family, your lover, your children or whatever is like, oh, you're a great accountant. It's being, um, oh my God, I still cannot think of the word, but yeah, being kind of pressured or pushed into that position because feeling like, yeah, um, a quote unquote black sheep um, or one that always stands out. There's some sort of, yeah, that duty, that that sense of, yeah, feeling that you have to fulfill either your parents or somebody else's um, expectations of you. And the encouragement here, as we can see from the duality and the clarity here, if you follow other people's expectations, you will always feel like the black sheep. You have to regain control for yourself to have clarity and really pinpoint on what you want in life. Um, <clears throat> your higher self is coming here to say, yeah, regain your clarity, regain your focus in terms of what you really want to do in life. What did you really want to accomplish? Uh, perhaps when you were younger, what made you felt, you know, alive and happy? Because the what we have here is if you're not doing what you love, then you're going to be feeling uncomfortable or sad or um, always having to fulfill other people's need, feeling like you always have to tackle responsibilities and duties and not living for yourself. <clears throat> so yes, embrace your life purpose the way that you want it. Shine light on what you need, uh, your, yeah, what you love and enjoy doing and what you need. And having the clarity, the focus, the determination, um, and the self-control and the self, um, <clears throat> uh, self-confidence to, to carry that out for yourself. Okay. So let's look into our Norman here. <clears throat> and for our Norman here, this is um, a unique setup. And we'll look at our final um, oracle here for last is what they want to save it for. But in this Norman, we're going to pair it with other cards and see what the combination comes out. So we have the tree here. We have the tower. We have the sun and we have the whip. So what's pairing with the tower is the rider. Okay, breaking free of the tower. And the tower in the Norman is different from the tower in the tarot, which you also got. But <laughs> funnily, in this interpretation, it's carrying the same message where you have to jump out or break out from the tower, um, from the limited confine traditions or constrictions or restriction that you are so accustomed to or that people have put you in a box into it's a matter of breaking out that tower um with with strong prominent force um uh, yeah a really strong confidence and character to 
and that is encouraged to kind of break out from that aspect. Next, we have the stork with the tree here. Yeah, because it's... We talked about how it can make you unhappy or dissatisfied if you stay where you are at or in, in other people's expectations of you. If, in order to better your health, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, there needs to be a breakage from, from that tower of restrictions or the tower of obligation is what we can call it here. Okay, so next we have the fish along with the whip. Okay. It's a lot of self-punishment. It's one message we're getting through. <laughs> um, or it's something that is repeated over and over and it's hard to get out of. So it's kind of like a burden. It's like, yeah, it's a burden that you have to shoulder um, that is on your shoulders that you have to carry. Uh, it's like a heavy burden is what we're feeling like. Um, and it's also a limitation towards living a fruitful and prosperous and happy life that you want or living life the way that you want it. I'm being recalled here how a koi, um, after much cultivation, can turn into a dragon. Um, but in order to do that, it takes the effort, right, to go through that process to be some to become something grand and magnanimous, uh, which is the dragon there in that legend story. Okay, and then we have the snake along with the sun. Let's see, this combination speaks of... Hmm. Okay, I'm hearing people pestering you with their words, with their comments, with their criticism, and preventing you from being your full self. Um, it's what we're getting through here, yes. So the main thing is for your own health, for your own benefit, for your own growth, for your own expansion, for your own dreams, for, your, for the happiness of your life and what you want to do. It's a matter of taking control, regaining the control in your life to put out the pestering of other people, um, the obligations and the boxing in by other people um, to regain your true purpose, your true purpose, the contract that you made with your higher self to come into this life and do things that you want to do, that you love and you want to establish and dream about. Yes. So let's get your final message here. Archangel Haniel with seek soul satisfaction, fan a flame of inner happiness. No wonder they say this for last. <laughs> the message couldn't be any clearer. Um, yes, it's about your happiness. It's about where you see yourself. This is part of your soul mission, is that self-recognition and that self-growth and overcoming people's restrictions, people's expectations of you, because this is a soul satisfaction level. This is a lesson and a layer for multiple layers that is to be learned on this greater level. And of course, it's going to bring you your happiness if you really truly follow and pursue what you really want and what you really love and what you really dream of. Wow. Okay. So yes, <laughs> go forth, lovely stars. That is what your higher self wants to convey to you. Uh, most importantly, is to follow your own destiny and your own path and not have feel limited or restricted either by others around you or by society uh, in terms of defining who and what you are. Um, that is a goal and a task and a happiness of your own to take. Yeah. All right, lovely stars. <laughs> that was quite a reading. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the message. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. 
I'm wishing you a wonderful, absolutely magical day whenever and wherever you are, lovely stars. It sounds like you're a very determined and wonderful soul. Yes, so please take care of yourself. Shine ever so bright and I will see you in the next reading. <laughs> Bye, lovely stars. Hello, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. All right, so let's see what your higher self wants most to convey or wishes to tell you. You've chosen this disc, which is um, the Earth Amplifier Manifestation Magnifier. I think that's the name of it. <laughs> Let me just double check here real quick. Uh, Earth Magic, yes. Okay, Earth Magic Amplifier. All right, higher ourselves the Pile 3. What would you like, wish most to tell Pile 3, please? Ooh, okay. A lot of abundance energy is coming through. That makes a lot of sense with this disc. Be ready to receive... Just joy and abundance is flooding through. Okay, wow, great energy. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see what we've got going on here for you, Pile 3. So first we have, let your light shine. I feel like a lot of you are spiritual gurus, teachers, things of those nature, or... Um, in that kind of like wanting to share this knowledge and this light uh, with the world. Um, yeah, so you don't have to be a teacher or a guru of source, but wanting just to share that, it's kind of like being almost like an instructor or just, yeah, in and of itself. And even like when I picked up this card, like the sun just kind of shone through really brightly. I know you can't see it, but... <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to mention that as well. And yeah, let it, let your light shine. This brilliant light that's coming through is flooding with energy. It's just this 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 very nice, loving energy of wanting to share um, the light of yours. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we have focus. Mm, okay. This focus is not normal focus. It's more focusing the energy from the spiritual realm, bringing it to here, basically being a light worker. It's like focusing the light, being a pillar of light, and being and making that readily available or just raising the vibration uh, around you, uh, within you, around you, and those you connect with. That's the kind of focus where we're talking about, kind of like a prism focusing liked energy and then uh, radiating out um, to its environment. Yes. Okay. And let's get our final oracle card here. We have soul family. Mm. Yes. Some of the two messages coming through here. Some of you are looking to connect with soul family and some of you are working with soul family um, in this process. Some of you are also building something big, kind of like an organization um, that has to do with the spiritual work. So, you know, like a spiritual retreat or a spiritual program, a spiritual channel, a spiritual workshop, those kind of things. So three messages there. Yes. Either working with soul family, looking for soul family or building something on this um, 3D realm for, uh, with some sort of spiritual endeavors, um, some spiritual work coming through here. We have a couple of religions trickling through. Um, what I mean by that is not like, yeah, it's more so working through religion, but from a spiritual perspective. Yes, so perhaps, for example, you know, like a guru lineage or coming from like Buddhism or um, so on and so forth, etc. Like any religion, insert blank there. Um, it's more so working on the spiritual aspect uh, through that lens. Yes, through a, a religious lens, perhaps, yeah. 
working spiritually through a religious lens. Yes, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. We want to save this for last. Okay. Um, do we? Spirit. Okay. So we know that we have an abundance of energy coming through here. Part of what your higher self wants to convey. Um, but it's an abundance of loving and light just filtering through. Yeah, I feel like we want to save this one for last. So let's look at these. Increase your knowledge. Education brings opportunity. Uh, take a course, pick up a book, or find a mentor to teach you what your soul longs to know. Okay. Yes. So in the beginning when I felt, I said that some of you were teachers, right? It felt, and not necessarily teacher in the sense of the traditional word, it's more so teaching and wanting to share. Like a teacher wants to share knowledge. Um, and that was the feeling I was getting here. It's kind of like being a novice, but uh, for some of you, it's being a novice in the perhaps spiritual realm or spiritual feel, but wanting to 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 learn and to share together. Yes, um, that's what's coming forth here. Um, and we have changes coming. I'm here to guide you through this exciting transformation. This is a time of joyous opportunities. Um, this is being guided by spirit. Um, that's what we're talking about. This is the Archangel Michael deck. So when it says I am, it's referring to Archangel Michael. But we have the spiritual team um, coming through here with your higher self. But more so, again, uh, angelic realm primarily. Uh, yeah, more so angelic realm. Um, it's the energy that's coming through. And they are helping you or guiding you along this course, so to speak, this this pathway towards this spir spiritual like worker development, sharing it with other people, creating a program, creating a retreat, creating some sort of structure. Um, yeah, to, to share and increase knowledge and light within a community. Yeah, and perhaps on a global scale, but more so, a, a community is where we start. Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay, we'll save this one for last. Let's, um, okay. So, let's go to your tarot next. There's one message they want to put, they want to insert in before we get to that. Uh, what would you like them to know? Higher selves of pile three, please. Um, okay, keep on increasing your knowledge. Okay. Yes, we mentioned that already. There's something they want to... Mm, okay. Part of it is kind of like the abundance that's coming through. Um, it's going to be fulfilling work. Is what I'm getting uh, fulfilling perhaps yeah both in terms of like financially and then emotionally um, and spiritually as well but the work that you're going to be doing uh, and the work that some of you are already doing um, whatever level you are at novice beginner intermediate advanced expert highly spiritual it, it, it doesn't matter it's as long as you are on this path to be like this fulcrum of light is what I'm getting. Uh, this fulcrum of light to change the pivots of this world into something greater. Then that in itself will be abundant and fulfilling. It's bringing light from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Um, reiterating because we have the earth magic disc here again. Um, okay, let's look. I, we can now proceed forward with the tarot. Um, so we have the tower. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm not getting so much the shock factor that we usually get from the tower, although there is a little bit of it. It's more so what you're doing for other people. Um, 
Yes. That's going to be ground shaking, earth shattering, quote unquote. Um, it's just a description. It's um, perhaps, yeah, some of what some of you will be doing will be on that kind of uh, huge and grand scale that the something the world has not seen before. But um, yeah, uh, let's see what else we have. But your soul, your higher self, your over soul is saying it's along the lines of that. Um, so we have seven of wands. And I can, I'll let you read all the different things here. Yeah. I hear the voice, <clears throat> the voice of being a go-getter. Um, okay. And then we have the Empress. Hmm. Okay. Let me shift this so we have more space here. And then we have the Queen of Cups. Now we're going to need some clarification because some of them I'm not getting, well, some as in this one specifically. The Queen of Cups. Uh, you'll be a soothing voice to the masses. Yes. Um, a soothing voice in the sense that, yeah, like a teacher or just like, you know, somebody who shares a blog or like um, shares their experiences uh, on a blog of sorts or a channel. Um, you'll be the voice of something, but you'll be a soothing voice. You'll be the voice that kind of stands out and lead people in a way. Um, yeah, we need some clarification. And give me just a second. Let me grab uh, this one. Okay. Is it this one? Not this one. Okay, yeah, it's this one. Okay. Okay, can we get a bit more clarification here? What you want to convey? Higher, higher self of how threes, please. Yeah, it's primarily it's saying that you're going to be a voice for the people or a voice for a group or for a voice for um, a smaller minority. Um, <clears throat> it's like you all, almost like you'll be mothering some aspect um yeah into something else but we need some clarification because this message is a little bit hazy what do you want to say here higher self of pile threes what is it in regards to this one no this one yes um okay let's see what this message is trying to say here okay so we have the wheel of fortune as the ties turn you'll be the leader okay um you could be elected into a certain position or role We have the Three of Cups. Yeah, primarily a role that looks out for other people. Um, and then we have the Page of Pentacles. Something new on the forefront. Perhaps that's why it's shocking to people, quote unquote shocking, like we mentioned. It's more so yeah, you being the voice for something, a soothing voice, a guiding, um, <clears throat> a new agey, for example, kind of voice, perhaps something along the lines of nature, uh, particularly, but yeah, guiding people in that sense, in that way, working your purpose, working your, um, 
um, your goal, your profession, uh, leading and guiding people in a certain way will kind of boost you as as the tide builds momentum in whatever progress you're trying to make, um, people will see you in a leader role and they'll elect you. Uh, yeah, they'll elect you into that role, like almost like automatically. It's like we nominate power number three to be, you know, the leader of this group, this movement, this uh, project, this etc etc so on so forth but since you are carrying this abundance and emergence of this energy that perhaps the world has not seen before and speaking up for it in a way that is spiritually and divinely guided um, your soul your higher self your over soul is encourage you to, encouraging you to keep on going forward with it to build upon this aspect, to build upon what you have created, to keep on garnering and gathering the skills and developing the skills necessary to put you into this role. You may not be aware of the role itself because the role will become automatic. Uh, the role will, will kind of uh, emerge uh, from itself. Yes, uh, it's an auto uh, autonomous role that emerges just by you doing what you're meant to be doing, which is letting your light shine um, and working in this creation process. Yeah, whatever it is you're creating, that is different for everybody here, but it's going to be quite groundbreaking uh, and it's certainly spiritually guided. Interesting, okay. Let's look at your learn more right now is what we're getting. It, uh, they're telling me to if we can get the practical aspect of all this spiritual aspect that we've been talking about. So this Lenormand um, is called the Solitaire Lenormand and um, <clears throat> there's one main image and we're connected with the other images and together we'll get the meanings of what it's trying to be conveyed. So here we have clouds, um, we have the bouquet here we have the scythe and we have the tree. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have, whoops, let me scoot this down. We have the coffin or the grave or the ending. Oh, lovely message. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and we have the letter. Let me... Okay, the ending to the difficulties, the letter. It's a document. It's a beautiful document, okay. Um, we have the mountain with the tree here. Hmm, okay. And we have the bear with the scythe. Okay, so it is not a path without challenges. First of all, <clears throat> the once if you are already in this role or if you have, you have yet to step into this role, once you are in this role, so whether you are in this role now, then this will apply, or once you step into the role or this position of fighting, advocating, uh, being the voice, being the leader of sorts, creating this, being the representative of it, um, it's going to create a system. Here we have a document. So for some of you, it will be some sort of official form or document, like a deed to a, um, a land, right? Or a house or something like that. There's some sort of official documents, but more so it could also be like a program or something that is, um, will be uh, automated and not just a program. Um, what's the best word here? 
uh, a regimen? No. <laughs> yeah, so, some sort of things that that people follow. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's an instruction set, um, yes, yeah, uh, a program of sorts. Um, sorry, that's the best words I'm finding at the moment. It will, it will be a, a beautiful program retreat uh, sort thing for people to follow, uh, and that will help kind of um, yeah whatever you're creating here will help kind of uh, put an end to a lot of worries, fears, doubts. It will shift people in terms of their consciousness and evolution in a greater way. But like I said, this path is not without its challenges. The longevity of this um, path, what the challenges, let's speak to that first. The the benefits is great. It comes in, in, in great forms and abundance of working on this path of, of bringing this out to people, of being the leader, the voice for people, the calming voice, the nurturing, the birthing voice for people, something to people can look up to and uh, um, stand up for. Uh, which is what you are and your path is. But um, to keep the longevity of this going um, down the line, far in the future, um, let's put it in a more concrete example, since we are doing the Norman. Let's say you created uh, a spiritual program, and then you have the products, people follow it, and they gain great benefits from it. They gain a lot of wisdom and growth and maturity from this program. And people love it. They're buying your program. There's a lot of abundance. It's shared among the communities, the worlds. Like, why has nobody ever come up with this before? It's amazing. We love it. We keep going. You, Pile 3, are the name, the voice, the face, the representative of it. But there are other things and forces in this world and this life that's going to come and challenge that, uh, particularly more so um, like what we'll call like dark forces. It's like, well, we see you trying to help people and advance this world and progress this world. It's like, well, we work for the dark side, so we can't have that. So so they're going to try to impede, interrupt, so on and so forth, etc., etc., etc. Um, so that's why it's not without its challenges. It's like you have to stay strong and firm in your conviction um, and be the continual leader of this um, to make a really, yeah, to stay, stay true to your purpose and to carry this pillar of light, whatever it is you're creating, to the people and make it as abundant as possible. And that is one way to carry this forth uh, and kind of make things easier or dissipate the challenges that will arise along the way. But it's certainly something great that will dissipate uh, and remove the worry and stress and help people elevate their consciousness and their light. Yes. And there's a lot of benefits to reap and sow, not in terms of only financially or monetarily, uh, but more so the abundance of what it is uh, for people. Yeah, so it's a combination of, yes, the financial abundance, but as well as the spiritual abundance and the spiritual growth that it can have on the impact of the community and of the world. Okay. Let's see what your final message here that they wanted to say for it is. Archangel Mallory, remember who you are. Take, take action when you are ready. Okay, there's um, a word of advice to be conscious and aware and be wise of timing here. Um, there are times to take action and there are times to kind of wait and see and observe the situation and the changes going on in the world. And and after you make your observations, like, oh, this is the most beneficial time to put out or to create a retreat for people. And there are times when it's like, well, maybe that's not the best time right now. And that is what's being advised here as well. Um, it's... Uh, 
a, a note on being wise, being observant, and being um, mindful of where, with whom, and when to carry this light, this project out onto the world. Yes. But the primary thing that your higher self wants to note and wants to say is that, yes, if you are at the novice stage of this, continue with it, develop it. One day, to a certain point, it's going to create something so great that it's going to sh um, astound people, to shock people, but in a positive way. And then it will be very beneficial for you, for your world, and for your community. Yes. And of course, the um, superfluous amount of abundance that flows with it. Yes. All right, Pavri. <laughs> that was your reading. A very lovely reading. Uh, if you enjoyed it, um, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already. I'm wishing you a wonderful magical day whenever and wherever you are. Can't wait to see the abundance that flows your way and the project and the light that you bring into this world. Um, take care of yourself. Shine ever, ever so bright. And I will see you in the next reading. <laughs> Bye, lovely stars.